everyone, in this video, we're going to be going over how you can set up user listings in EasyOffice. User listings are a form of access control in EZO, which allow you to restrict the access of certain users by either groups, locations, or both. So for that, let's go into company settings. In company settings, we have um, two types of settings. We have the simple access control, which is basically just setting up arbitration on checkout reservations and visibility of items. It does not mean that you're going to have user listings of items. The second type of arbitration, and this is the one relevant to this video, is the advanced, uh, advanced access control. This is a premium feature. So that means users on the premium plan can access it. So over here, once you select this, you have user listings enabled. How do you want to restrict access is the first setting that you have to select when setting up user listings. What this means is, do you want to control the visibility of your users based on the groups? Do you want to control visibility based on locations? Or do you want an intersection of groups and locations? So for now, we're going to go with both groups and locations. And this is useful if you want certain users to only see certain groups of items that are present at certain locations. So this is probably the most drilled down version of visibility that you can get. So within this, we have the same old arbitration settings, which are, do you want arbitration on check-in and check-out? Do you want arbitration on reservation? And if you want the users to be able to see all items. So if you allow staff users over here to see all items, what it's going to do is that they will be able to see all of the items, but they can only um, re request or reserve items that are outside of their user listings. Within their user listing, they can check out the items directly if they have been given the permission to do so. Um, enable arbitration or reservation for items outside of a user, user listing. So if you select this particular setting, what's going to happen is that the staff user will need to make a reservation request for all items that are outside their user listing. The same flow applies on the allow your supervisors to see all items setting within their own user listing they can check out items directly to themselves but outside of their user listing they will have to request reservations on items for them to be checked out to themselves and then we have these further settings which are self-explanatory we have do not allow supervisors to change custom fields and allow supervisors to assign work orders to users outside their user listing so these this, their setup will depend entirely on um, what kind of access control you want to give your users so that's basically what all of these settings mean so let's update these and then i'll go into user listings and just show you how you can manage user listings on an individual level so in user listings so here's the user listings listing page from here we're going to add a new user listing let's name this user listing the demo listing so since we've restricted by groups and locations, we need to assign which groups this particular, the users in this particular listing have access to. So over here, I'm going to choose cutting tools, electrical equipment, furniture, and heavy machinery. And further drilling it down, we have to choose where do we want to see all of these items at. So for now, let's just select building A, B, C, Heathrow, and head office. Um, so include all current and future nested locations. What this does is it selects all of the locations that you uh, that are available and then if any new location is added to the system that's also going to automatically be included in this. So if you want someone to have access to all possible locations this is the setting you should select. So let's say for now we're done. Within this user listing, we can add users by going to the users by going into the users tab and clicking on add or remove users. So a user can only exist in one user listing at a time. So do note that and you can't assign the same user listing to multiple people. I mean, you can't assign this same user multiple user listings. So if anyone already exists in the user listing and they have items within that user listing that are checked out to them, as you can see in this error message, they can't be added to a new user listing. So in our case, that's John Smith, right? Next, we have the groups and locations that fall under our user listing. And then we can also select the settings. So you can um, set up user listing specific settings for arbitration. So some user listings might not have arbitration for their users while others may. 
This is especially useful in larger organizations where higher level teams have more power than teams who are lower in the chain. So let's say we give you staff users the ability to create items. We also can apply different settings to this user listing around arbitration, right? So you can choose to give the people in your user listing the ability to keep start and schedule services. This is a particularly useful setting for um, users in the maintenance department where all of them can perform services and items. Then we have arbitration and then the same settings that we discussed in the company settings over here, they apply over here. And then whatever we select here is going to be, is going to overwrite what you selected in the company settings for this particular user listing. So that pretty much covers user listings and how to set them up. Thank you.